the Arctic. No other region on our planet is warming as rapidly. But how does the Arctic influence the global climate? It's the largest Arctic expedition in history with a common goal, to collect data over an entire year in order to help find the missing piece of the puzzle in climate research. Polarstern set sail from Norway bound for the Arctic, supported by the Russian research vessel Akademik Fedorov, her goal to find a suitable ice flow. At 85 degrees north and 134 degrees east, Polarstern allows herself to become frozen in the ice, and the drift begins. It's a race against the oncoming polar night. The camp is set up in just 18 days. From now on, the interdisciplinary teams will collect valuable data every day. Storms and extreme temperatures make research challenging and alter the appearance of the flow. The constant worry on everyone's minds, will the flow remain stable? An international fleet supports the team on this extreme voyage. The first exchange of crew and supplies takes place in the middle of the polar night. Meanwhile, on some days, Polarstern drifts up to 25 kilometers. Once again, Kapitan Dranitsin sets off on a supply mission through the sea ice which is delayed by difficult weather and ice conditions. A new record in the meantime. Never before has a research icebreaker sailed so close to the North Pole in winter. It was exhausting, but at the same time extremely exciting and very rewarding. Those views are, are kind of the reward for all the hard work. You get these amazing vistas looking back towards the ship or looking out towards the horizon. I mean, now, of course, we're moving in the ice and you have this noise when the ice cracks in front of the vessel. This is amazing. And I just had to remind myself actively that I'm actually standing on an ocean. Just seeing ice um, in those light conditions for the first time for myself was very, very beautiful. The uh, Arctic is a region where the where climate warming is larger. It's at least uh, twice as large as in the global average, and in winter time it's even much more pronounced. Uh, at the same time, it is the region where our climate models have the largest uncertainties. During this stay on the ice, you you kind of have an idea, the ice is becoming thinner. And so what we are doing is actually demonstrating how organisms will change and their distribution will change and activities will change with the loss of sea ice in the Arctic. We had this big scanning radar on top of the ship never had a scanning radar uh, looking at clouds in the Central Arctic before. We were running the ROV, a remote operated vehicle, under sea ice in the complete darkness in winter and to measure yeah, the ice uh, properties and the water mass properties right under the ice, these things uh, were the first time. But I think that some of the snow measurements was really new thing. There were automatic measurements of the snow hardness, for example. Aerosol measurements, uh, another huge first. Uh, you know, Arctic aerosols are really important for the system. It's something we know uh, is important, but we just haven't been there, especially in the winter time, to measure Arctic aerosols directly. Especially in mosaic was that we have a so extensive measurement. So we have so many of sensors so that we could have a so good spatial coverage, a temporal coverage. The time series that we've created with the sea ice sampling of physical, geochemical and biological properties 
it's unique. It's never been done before. For me, that would happen that we will build the greatest database of observational data sets all year round with all the different points of view. Our results will fill this knowledge gap that we see in all the climate models. I mean, all data will be available for all climate modelers, and I think that will actually be a a new foundation for politicians to take decisions from. For the first time we have been able to study the interactions uh, between the major compartments of the Arctic climate system, between the atmosphere, the sea ice, the snow, uh, the ocean, the ecosystem and the biogeochemistry in so much detail. The data set that we bring back is so rich it will keep us busy for years and years to come to fully exploit uh, the things that we can learn from that data.